In Elden Ring, we have 165 bosses to face in the game, and I wanted to find out how many of those could be your very first boss. Let's find out. First boss we'd normally encounter is the Grafted Scion, but we actually don't have to fight him. Launching off the nearest cliffside sends us to the next part of the game regardless. The Sorry Melina, that's not for me this run, got a different goal in mind. I trek through the cave to our other normal starting boss, Soldier of Godric. Now as a note, we won't be finishing off the bosses in this run. The reason being, in some cases, it can cause world changes that gives us access to bosses we would otherwise not be able to reach. After going past Tree Sentinel, our first objective is grabbing Torrent. We do make a quick stop on the way to tick off the Beastmen of Faramazula in Groveside Cave, then reach the site of Grace. Yo Melna. With Torrent, we can now really start. Grab the map fragment so we can keep track of the bosses and head for our next one. A Crucible Knight in an Ever Jail, which for far too long I'd been calling an Ever Gowl. Oops, sorry Torrent. We then enter our first catacombs, and also our first Erdtree Burial Watchdog. Did realise he had missed one at the start, so a bit of fast travelling back. Using our stone sword key, we enter the Fringe Folk Hero's Grave, where I may have forgotten the route down, leading to quite a few deaths down here. With a lot of trial and error though, I managed to get through to the Ulcerated Tree Spirit, who was actually my third boss after Tree Sentinel in my first playthrough, so that was a fun time. And a quick speed run of a few easy to grab bosses in Limgrave, before running into Soul's favourite NPC, good old Patches. Whilst we're in the Merc Water area, also headed to the Catacombs, getting through the Swarm of Gremlins to reach the Grave Warden Duelist, who has a pretty cool introduction. Then a couple who will be seen a lot during this run, the Knight's Cavalry and the Deathbird, who only show up at night, and got to say the frame rate was not a big fan of the Deathbird. Nothing too interesting for the rest of Limgrave, as only required some travelling through Catacombs, Ruins, a Jail, and a final cave. Honestly, how do we actually survive that? And pretty quickly, we've reached 20 bosses with a local Kaika and a superhero landing from Margit. Since we can't beat Margit, we can't continue through Stormvale and Godric, so now to Leonia, with things getting a bit more tricky. We skip Stormvale entirely using the right side path, and so widen our choice of first boss immensely. Interestingly, we can go to Roundtable Hold, which for some reason I thought we had to beat Margit first, but oh well. Didn't have much to do there except to upgrade our new sword, and continued on. First stop in Leonia was Stillwater Cave, getting through and meeting a clean rot knight, then into another river jail for the next one, and Adan did not mess about. I think we're going to progressively spend less and less time in each boss arena, until the final one we just die walking through the doorway. We then go through a gauntlet of repeated bosses, find another bloodhound knight in a cave, a wizard tree watchdog, an extra shadow horseman, and then his pet birds nearby. I had forgotten someone in Limgrave, so I had to make a quick trip back, as there's the bell bearing hunter in the Warmaster's shack that appears at night. Plenty of night owls in this game. Back to Leonia, to another randomly placed jail, meeting balls, and our very first Erdtree avatar. Again, we'll be meeting quite a few variations of this guy. In what way is that a snail? Out from the catacombs, heads to the nearby village, and had a very short greeting with Omen Killer, which was ironic as we met another Charon paddling about nearby. Now a big thing I haven't mentioned so far is the underground, and here we do grab the lift down to Ainsel River, but just to get the grace, we're going to do that all together much later on. First we've got Leona to focus on, chatted with the turtle about some lore, and then met another Bell Baron hunter, and then got a two for one in the nearby catacombs finding a black knife assassin behind a hidden wall, as well as the catacombs main boss in the cemetery shade. Oh and this area also has a second entry avatar that we ran past. Right, where's this next cave? Oh. Did finally find it and our first Crystallian boss inside. So, we've got the Eye of Sauron in Elden Ring then. Ow. Headed on, and after quite a bit of ladder climbing, came to the Magma Worm Makars Arena. We do have to beat him to get to Altus, but we're going to go a different route, grabbing yet another Knight's Cavalry on the way, and a local dragon. Leaving only a few left over to pick off for Leonia. A couple of underground spots for another Crystallion, and the nightmare fuel that is Royal Revenant. Worst boss in Elden Ring right here. And with a glintstone key grabbed near the dragon earlier, we can enter Raya Lucaria. Now, won't lie, was a pretty manic dash through in order to reach the Red Wolf. No real planning, just a lot of YOLO. But fortunately, as far as I know, we do need to beat the Red Wolf to reach Renala, so she's out as well. That just left one boss left for us here. Didn't need to get past some of these guys, who I'm not a fan of personally, too spider-like, and met Ghost Loretta. Before heading on, I needed to do a little bit of backtracking, as had forgotten all about the Weeping Peninsula. Not much to focus on here though, as honestly nothing gets in our way from reaching bosses, as we do get a lot of repeat bosses scattered around here to grab, and then the rest just being underground bosses, which this game absolutely loves anything underground. Tunnels, ruins, caves, every jails could even make a case for including in that list. We finished the area with Lee and I misbegotten, and reaching 55 potential first bosses so far, and we're not done yet. Now, time to go to everyone's favourite Elden Ring vacation spot, Kaelid, with a friendly greeting from an invader. 
Now with having done the last few areas, got a pretty good system for working through bosses now. First is the underground stuff. Pretty much everything that falls into that category is available as soon as you enter the area. So easy to speed around and torrent and grab them all. Also, I didn't really realise until doing this how many duo bosses the game puts into these harder sections. Then, after the underground's done, we're next onto the local variety of bosses. The night bosses, tree bosses, dragons, and all the rest. That's the quick ones out of the way, and with those done, now for the interesting ones. With first visit to Redmain Castle, where I was expecting Radan, but instead was greeted by a misbegotten warrior and a crucible knight. Turns out I need to either do a certain quest, or grab an Altus Plateau Grace in order to start the festival and face Radan. So, I went and grabbed the other medallion piece, headed up in the lift, saying hello to the two tree sentinels on the way, in order to grab a grace, and Radan is now available for us. But we'll leave him to the last of the five left in Kaelid. Commander O'Neill was an easy one, hiding out in the swamp, as well as a Blackblade Kindred, looking like the scariest bodyguard ever in Dragon Barrow. And after lighting the beacons in the Cilia Tower, we could face the Nox Twins, who, I'll be honest, I'd forgotten all about. To the Divine Tower, where I did have some climbing up issues, immediately followed by the opposite, with some falling problems inside the tower. The ankle and knee strength on display here. Eventually got to the bottom meeting the Godskin Apostle, waiting for us at the tower's base. That just left us fighting as the first boss, the demigod and master of gravity himself, Radan, and with him, reaching 80 potential first bosses. Did need to check one other thing before leaving Kaelid, there is a catacombs entrance in the Radan arena, but yeah, we can't access it unless we beat Radan first, so a tree spirit in there is off the table. Now for Altus, Laindel and St. Gelmir to potentially finish the overworld. Grabbed a few quick bosses near the elevator, being another couple of copies in a Knight's Cavalry and another Tibia. And we did end up being able to fight Godric after all, in Never Jail. For some reason, I thought he was a boss. Hmm. Decided we would start on Mount Gelmir and work our way back towards the capital. Starting out with a couple of overworld bosses, meeting a Falling Star Beast on the way, then Demi-Human Maggie, and a local Tree Spirit. Didn't I just fight you? After trekking through Volcano Manor, enjoying the various enemies within, and end up facing the second godskin. The question that comes to mind now is Rykard. The quest line to reach him takes us to mountaintops of the giants, which we're definitely not reaching. The normal path to reach him requires beating Noble, so he's off the table, sort of. To finish off Volcano Manor, we faced the Abductor Virgin duo, and we were done here. Just leaving the underground spots in Mount Gelmir, which, same as in Kaelid, we were able to get to and clear through pretty quickly, with one last pit stop at the nearby lava pool to meet the local magma worm. Followed that pattern going into Altus, clearing out some underground spots, where in Sage Cave we even had an extra boss to find in there. And whilst clearing through Shaded Castle and facing Elamero of the Briar, we reach a milestone 100 potential first bosses. And we have also now run out of markers that I can use on the map. And this was where we had to make a whole spreadsheet to keep track of all of them. This does mean we're approaching the end though. Passed by Lanciax, cleared through the overworld bosses, of which there was a fair few. And then the final ones of Altus in the underground hideouts. Quick shout out as well to the Sainted Hero's Grave for how horrendous the shadow enemies are in getting through this one. That left us with Laindel itself. Now, the capital, of course, is blocked off by the Draconic Tree Sentinel, but that doesn't mean there's no bosses around here to grab. We've got our standard knight enemies in the Deathbird and Bellbearing combo in the overworld. And after finishing with them, we've then got three underground bosses in an Onyx Lord, a pair of Crucible Knights, and a Duelist. No, not that one. And that's pretty much the overworld done. Since we can't go to Capsule, the mountaintop bosses, and everything past that is blocked off to us. We do still have the underground though. So headed down, and in Shifra, we faced the local Spirit Moose, and then ventured up the river to fight the Dragonkin soldier hanging out. Now, Nokron is of course off limits to us as we're not able to beat Radan, and we can't fight Moog over there in his palace as we can't reach consecrated snowfields or complete Varys questline, so he's off the table too. Which meant all that was left was a final Dragonkin soldier, who we find in Ainsel River to finish this runoff. Meaning, depending on how lost you get in your playthrough, you have 117 bosses who could potentially be your first one. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you for the next one.